Woman Jika, welcome to all of you here in person or watching this online. I'm Professor Marie Sierra, the Dean of the Faculty of Fine Arts and Music at the University of Melbourne. Today we are on Bunwurong country in the Eastern Kulin Nation in our faculty's Willin Garden on the South Bank campus of the University of Melbourne. Joining me today are very important guests. Bunwurong elder, Parbinata Carolyn Briggs, Vice Chancellor Duncan Maskell, and Michael Julian from the Willen Center for Indigenous Arts and Cultural Development. Womanjika to you. Today, the 27th of May, is the anniversary of the successful 1967 referendum to include Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in the census. Today is also the first day of National Reconciliation Week the theme of, our, of which this year is, more than a word, reconciliation takes action. Our faculty marks this occasion by coming together with the traditional custodian of the land to participate in a welcome to country and smoking ceremony. We are pleased to celebrate the Willen Center for Indigenous Arts and Cultural Development and to mark the opening of National Reconciliation Week for the University of Melbourne here in our unique Willing Garden. We would also like to acknowledge <clears throat> and celebrate our Indigenous colleagues and students in this faculty and across the university. The story of the Willing Center is one of direct action, the result of continued effort to make this faculty culturally safe for First Nations people. The site of the Willing Garden was the location of a student and staff-led protest calling for change within the university. Direct action led to the creation of the Willen Center, which was originally built on this site. The Willen Center has, for almost 20 years of growth and connection, provided a rich tapestry of shared knowledge for staff, students, and ensured our commitment to remaining culturally safe as a place for our First Nations students. The significance and ongoing work of Tara Keonis the head of our Willen Center for Indigenous Arts and Cultural Development, and those who founded the center before him, has given a unique focus to our curriculum's expression of indigenous knowledges and its improvement. Our students support education, research into, and understanding of these indigenous knowledges. Tariki is unable to be with us today, but we would like to acknowledge and thank him for his contributions. It is fitting that we come here today, First Nations people and non-Indigenous people, and acknowledge what has been achieved so far and what more can be achieved when we begin with shared action. The ceremony today renews our community's commitment to reconciliation with our Indigenous colleagues, students, and friends. There is much more to be done in learning about and celebrating Indigenous culture and actively creating a path towards reconciliation. I am pleased now to introduce Vice Chancellor of the University of Melbourne, Professor Duncan Maskell. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you very much, Marie. It is a real honour for me to be here on Kulin Country at the South Bank campus. And it's a pleasure to join with colleagues from the Faculty of Fine Arts and Music and with students and other members of our broader community. It's also a great privilege and joy to be wearing the possum coat today not just because of the honorific privilege of doing so, but also because it's keeping me warm on what is a relatively cold day, its primary purpose being fulfilled. Uh, I join you, Marie, in welcoming Parvinata Carolyn Briggs for the official opening of the most important week in Australia's calendar, National Reconciliation Week. Parvinata Carolyn Briggs is someone that I personally look up to enormously. I will always remember her warm and wise words of welcome to me when I began as Vice-Chancellor at the University of Melbourne two and a half years ago. She reminded me then of the great importance of education and of community from the perspective of Indigenous people. These remain central focal points for us as a university. As we launch National Reconciliation Week 2021, the unique contributions of Indigenous knowledge in the arts, environment, languages and many other fields grows more significant. We feel the power of Indigenous knowledge here at the Willin Centre. 
You have said, Marie, that the centre is itself the outcome of direct action by committed people going back decades. And the Willins Centre, led by Tiriki Onus, who sadly can't be here today, continues to do fantastic work day by day in all those areas that you mentioned, including curriculum, education, research, student support, and building understanding. This year's National Reconciliation Week theme is more than a word, reconciliation takes action. And as that theme reminds us, reconciliation in Australia still has a journey to travel. That requires more action, not just words. The university under my watch is totally on board with that important concept. As a university, we are seeking to strengthen the ties of place, grounded as we are on Aboriginal land. We seek to do this through all of our work in education and research, in building community, and as we grow stronger in that sense of place, becoming even more important to the wider global world to which we are inseparably connected. This is action of a definite and worthy kind. We undertake it aware of enormous failings in our own past, including at our university. As we celebrate National Reconciliation Week 2021, we look to the future with a profound sense of respect for all communities, especially those of the traditional custodians of this land. We do face difficult days ahead amid a continuing pandemic, but let us continue the work of reconciliation undeterred and indeed even more strongly than before. Thank you. Ngojin, pay my respects to all of you being part of this whole journey and taking it further with Wamanjika means come with a purpose to our beautiful home, the lands of the two great bays. And here we go, <laughs> we have papers everywhere. <laughs> but it, it is important to understand that it's just more than a word. It comes with a purpose. And what is your purpose? So, Wamanjika, Marambik, Big Bunarong, Namdep, Burupton, Ata, Wheelam. Wheelam is home, and this is the home of Melbourne University. It started here. I, think, I thought it started, might have started up there at Melbourne Uni in Bouverie Street when we were trying to demonstrate to bring change. And I think that was a and it resonated right down to here now where we are. So it's had different iterations and we've got a joint person, dog, being a part of our journey. So it is my great pleasure to be able to welcome you this afternoon, oh, well, it's this afternoon, but it is also my responsibility to ensure that you do come with a purpose. Wamanjika. Come, ask to come, and what is your intention? I do so not on, only on behalf of my ancestors of the Yellicot Willem, I do so on behalf of all First Nations on the lands we meet today. First Nations peoples across Australia all share a special connection to the lands and waters of their ancestors that has not been disconnected since millennia, despite the dispossession the displacement, the discrimination that we've all experienced over the last 230 years. These connections date back to our creation stories. For the Bunburang, our creation stories tells us of Bunjo, our creator spirit, who travels as an eagle and how he created these lands and waters around where we meet today. He also created the Kulin people and he taught them about the circular relationships that they have with these lands and waters in order for us to be taken care of by the, this land. We also have to take care through adhering to the Wurrungi Bik, the law of the land, our customary laws, much like our laws today. These laws dictated how we interacted with each other how we interacted with the land and how we conduct ourselves while we're on other people's countries. The Bunwurrung Wurrungi Bik speaks of three Pacific laws. The first law is Yelenj, knowledge. 
It is the responsibility that we all have knowledge. And once knowledge is attained, we have the, re we have the responsibility to ensure its survival, its continuation. We have the responsibility for our younger generation to maintain that knowledge and pass it down so it can be used for our future generations. We also have the, gem, the law of Jambana. This law speaks of community, the importance of community, the importance of diverse communities, but of, but of a unified community. Bunwurrung people in the East of the Kulin Nation understood that power of diversity that is within our lands and also increases our capabilities. It was always good to share stories and the different experiences. However, they understood to utilise this very powerful tool. They had to identify a common purpose. And what are these things that we all have in common? Finally, the last law is connection to Pavanata or country. We all might call it honouring sacred ground, paying respects to our past generations, the people who took care of the land before us and the people who lived and died on the land before we were all here, paying respects to stories, histories on the land on which we live today. We are very fortunate in this beautiful continent we now know as Australia to have 80,000 years of human history and it is most important to pay respects to that history. Not only while we're here at work or at study, but when we go home, just reflect, just have a moment. It's more than a word. Take action. And if we can adhere to these three Warungi Biks, I can say in the words of my ancestors, come with a, come with a purpose. Wamanjika, Marambik Bik, Bunarong, Namda, Barupton, Ata Willem. Come with a purpose to our beautiful home, the lands of the two great bays, Nam, Port Phillip Bay, and Marin, Western Port Bay. So I wish you all this, the lighting of the willow is very important to remind us that we need to ignite, ignite the, the amazing knowledges that you will be a part of, but it's also about igniting the fire within all of us. So let's celebrate that and come with a purpose. Nungujin. You are in my presence, I'm in yours. Thank you. Now, part of this ceremony, which is one of the oldest ceremonies on earth that we all must adhere to, and I think every country in the world of First Peoples, when you were offered on country, you had to demonstrate your purpose. And you were cleansed, what we call cleansing your murup. And one of those is placing meryong. Meryong. This represents, all well, it's a black wattle, represents our elders, the knowledge of our elders, it, the use of this material, this beautiful part of our nature that reminds us the diversity of our elders across this great continent and the many different nations. And each Mirjung or each BL, oh no, sorry, I'm getting on, represents the diversity and the strength of each of the areas around. So one is Mirjung. The other one is our beautiful eucalypt, which we know as a gum leaf or BL. And like, like the wattle, it rep represents the diversity of all our communities around this country.
because there's no one eucalypt. They're all different. There's about 700 different varieties. So this represents the diversity of community and how we unify community. BL. The last one represents our bubbles, our children. It needs host plants to grow, to grow strong, just like this Willen community here, or just like our university, Melbourne University. It's about, we don't quite disconnect from our host plants that gives us the knowledge and strength to move forward. So just like our children, don't disconnect from us. So this is Bali, our cherry balat that goes to the fire. And then Julian will present and hopefully we can cleanse your murrup and what, what we carry and what we want to let go of. So we'll be doing it, it's a cleansing. I love this visual that can go on around, across our beautiful universities, across up to Carlton, down here, to the Willen, to VCA, and all the amazing knowledges that are within this schools throughout these institutions that make strengthens us to move forward to our Urine Boy tomorrow's Thank you, Parabinata Carolyn Briggs and Michael for sharing your culture with us today. I'd like to finish by asking all of you who have joined us today to reflect, not just on the culture and history of First Nations, but on the ongoing responsibility each of us has to play in an active role of reconciliation. This year's theme, as already said, is more than a word, reconciliation takes action. It urges the reconciliation movement in Australia towards braver and more impactful actions. As we move through this week and all the weeks and months to come, I would ask you to listen and respond to this call. Thank you.